Okay, uh, so what is the chemoselectivity? Uh, you know, we have already discussed about this, uh, I think a little bit, chemoselectivity. Chemoselectivity means that if you have a bifunctional uh, compound, bifunctional group compound, where there are two or more than two functional groups available in a single compound, and the reaction is preferentially taking place over the one functional group, one functional group is going to to be favorably undergoing the reaction the, uh, rather than the other. We say that the reaction um, is showing the chemoselectivity. For instance, let's take this uh, bifunctional compound where we have this acid group and the nitro group. If this is subjected to the uh, you know reduction, what would happen? Uh, there, are, there are a number of possibilities. First possibility is this, uh, uh, this nitro group will be reduced keeping uh, this will be unaffected this will be the case second possibility is that this will remain the same but this will be uh, are both both are reduced third possibility this one is intact this one is reduced and the last possibility is that this one uh, is re being reduced and this remains unaffected uh, so it, it also depends upon the reagent such kind of the compounds we call as the chemoselective reaction because the functional group that uh, that are present they are being uh, uh, selectively reacted with the reagent uh, the, again uh, re there is a critical role of the reagent as well you see there are a number of the reagent available that can preferentially uh, reduce the acidic group certain other reagents are there that reduce the nitro group uh, so this is there is a chemoselective the, the, there is an involvement of the chemoselectivity. Uh, there's, this is still another example. There is a possibility of the N-acylation and the O-acylation. Uh, so if uh, the compound is uh, subject, uh, I mean, uh, is undergoing the N-acylation, uh, sometime you will see that it is undergoing the uh, O-acylation. A third possibility is that both undergo acylation. Um, but normally what happens that the N is going uh, undergoing the uh, acylation normally uh, if uh, you are dealing with the aromatic amino acid in presence of phenolic groups. So uh, because O acylation requires a specific conditions, right? So that, that is again selectivity because there is a possibility that O undergo O acylation, uh, the reaction undergo the reactant undergo O acylation, but uh, what what is going to happen? Uh, this N is going is uh, undergoing the acylation, so that means that uh, uh, the reaction is chemoselective, right? So I think you have a good idea about chemoselectivity now. Uh, there are a number of examples that you can uh, uh, give as an ex uh, as an example. Uh, there are a number of reactions that you can give, give as an example for this chemoselectivity. Again, you can see that this preferentially only one is attacking. There's a possibility of the other, but uh, see. So I'm not going to take much of my time again on this because you can see that there is a, again, you can see that there's, there's a involvement of the uh, neighboring group right ne neighboring group participation and then uh, you would have this uh, keto and the enol form and then what would happen next uh, there will be result uh, re that will be resulting into one product uh, preferentially than the other so these are some other examples you can see this one by one now again if you see here that uh, you may have uh, read about that uh, uh, protecting group sometimes it's possible that uh, if you have more than one functional group you can use various protecting group that can mask one of the one of the uh, site and the one of the uh, site then will be available for the attack under that condition we can see that the reaction is becoming stereo uh, chemo specific so this is another reaction what is chemo specific if you block one of the site completely so that there is no possibility for the coming re, uh, coming nucleophile to attack on. There is a single possibility. There is no second possibility because of masking this group. That's why we say that the reaction is chemo specific. 
This is the best example. Because there's no possibility for the, uh, if you're masking this group, or if you're masking this one, uh, this one would have only one possibility is to reduce this side. If you're masking this one, there's possibility for only one, uh, for the coming uh, nucleophile, there's a possibility to reduce this one only, this one. I mean, there are two functional groups. One is the ether, uh, this is the ester group, and this one is the ketone group. But esters are preferentially, uh, uh, I mean, the ketone, if you protect the ketones, uh, there's be there will be a possibility for the ester to be reduced instead of this ketone. So uh, now I can, get, now I can uh, exclusively say that, I can say that when the stereoselectivity, what I'm saying, when the chemoselectivity reach to the 100%, we say the reaction is becoming chemo specific because uh, now this one site has been 100% blocked there is no possibility of the other right I can give explain it in another way sometime you know it's possible that uh, we have this for instance if I am talking about this one we have this carbonyl group and I said I already told you that if we have a certain this is not a you know a stereocenter is it? This is not a stereocenter. But uh, because there are similar groups are attached, but if there's a stereocenter and one of the sites is completely blocked, right? What would happen? There will be a less physical, feasible space available for the coming nucleophile at one side compared to the other to the other. So preferentially the carbonyl will be attacked at one side exclusively. But let's see what happens. Let's see, just take the situation. Just imagine the situations where we increase the bulkiness of this group uh, to the level where there is a complete blockage at one side of this uh, carbonyl group. Then what you can see next, there will be only this chemoselectivity. Uh, in fact, now this is becoming stereoselective. Why? Because the stereochemistry of the reactant this is coming into action is blocking one side completely. And there is only one possibility for the coming a nucleophile to attack at one side. So when the stereoselectivity reach to 100%, the reaction becoming stereospecific. I think you got my point, what I'm trying to say. Same is the case that if you are masking a group completely, uh, there is no possibility for the other, uh, uh, for the coming nucleophile to attack on the other side. Then you can see that, you can say that these, uh, specificity I mean the uh, chemo selectivity has reached to the hundred percent and now there's a uh, there is only one possibility for the attack uh, on only one site uh, only one functional group so then we can say that this the reaction is becoming uh, chemo specific I think you can see some more example from here there are a number of example given and depending upon the uh, conditions you can create such conditions where the selectivity can be enhanced or the specific, even the reaction, a stereoselective reaction can be converted into a stereospecific or the uh, radio or selective can be changed into a radio specific or the uh, stereoselective reaction can be changed into a stereospecific just by having, just by treating the reagent in such a way so that there is uh, blocking, masking the site, or uh, uh, completely blocking one of the functional group, that will result the uh, that will de uh, increase the sele selectivity. What do, what do what do we mean by increasing selectivity? Selectivity means that uh, if there is a ratio of, uh, for instance, we, there is a ratio of 70 to 30, and you increase that ratio just by uh, uh, placing certain bulky group, and you increasing that up to 80-20. And then 90, 20, 90, 10, 95, 5, and ultimately you reach the 100, 0. These are the ratios, which means that we have enhanced the stereoselectivity up to 100%. Now the reaction is becoming uh, specific. So um, uh, you can uh, see this uh, discussions about these 
stereo specificity and stereo selectivity what in the last lecture we have talked about the dash stereo selectivity again i would like to talk a little bit about this dash stereo selectivity in the next video because why i'm doing that is that uh, this directly linked to our uh, today's topic that is the uh, cram collision model and the falcon n model so i would like to uh, you know uh, discuss a little about a little bit about this dye stereo selectivity in the next video.